Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well. I think some of you have picked up on the fact that not only do I have a bit of an addiction to shopping on iHerb, but I also have a bit of an addiction to shopping on YesStyle. YesStyle is where I get all my Japanese and K-beauty skincare products to try out and review for you guys. And that is where I got a product that I'm really excited to share with you today, the Centella Green Level Unscented Sun SPF 50 Plus PA4 Plus. This is by the K-Beauty brand Purito. I hope I'm saying that right. At least on their website, it says that it's kind of a hybrid between pur uh, Purify and Two, or Two Purify is kind of what they're going for. Anyways, you guys uh, mentioned this in the comments and asked me to review it. Thank you so much. I had no idea this had come out, and so as soon as you all told me about it, I headed over to YesStyle and ordered myself some. And I've been using it for several weeks, so I can give you a good uh, experiential review, and of course I'll also talk about the ingredients. Uh, first up, it is free of fragrance, which I love. Fragrance is a, a problem in skincare products, namely leave-on products but it's even more problematic in your sunscreens. And here are the reasons why. Fragrance can cause uh, vasodilation in the skin, which can lead to redness, bring in inflammatory cells into your skin, and drive, drive inflammation into the skin. Fragrance is also very sensitizing. And what that means is that it teases your immune system and begs your immune system to rebel against it in addition to that, it also begs your immune system to just come in and rebel. And as a result, you can develop sensitivity to other ingredients and things that would otherwise have been fine if it weren't for the presence of fragrance. And then in sunscreen, it's really a problem because the combination of fragrance with UV from the sun uh, can make those fragrance ingredients and other ingredients even more sensitizing and problematic. Fragrances the most common ingredient to cause problems for people and importantly it doesn't do anything other than make things something that you want to buy so i always encourage you guys to do diligence and make every effort to avoid fragrance both natural and synthetic they both are the same they both are the same have the same issues all right so fragrance free which i love essential oil free again which i love uh, and for those of you out there with sensitive skin, this is alcohol free. A lot of chemical sunscreens, which this is by the way, a lot of chemical sunscreens will have some added alcohol to help dissolve those chemical filters. This does not have, have that in it. Um, and it's also oil, mineral oil free. Now mineral oil is not a bad ingredient whatsoever. It's actually a great ingredient. It doesn't absorb into your skin uh, to a significant extent. So it's very, it's not sensitizing. Your immune system will ignore it. And it makes a very nice hydrating seal to trans epidermal water loss. So it's a good occlusive ingredient, wonderful skin conditioning reagent. But this does not contain that. The brand Purito is cruelty free, and this particular product is vegan. Uh, so wonderful in those regards. I know a lot of you want to exclusively purchase uh, cruelty free products and vegan products. And so this meets those criteria. So a lot of things in its favor. This sunscreen is not labeled as water resistant, however, so it's not gonna hold up under sweating or swimming as well as a water resistant sunscreen would. Um, but for everyday use, that is okay, so long as you uh, apply enough of it and you reapply it. Even if the sunscreen is water resistant, you still have to reapply it consistently because it wears off. It gets rubbed off and even, even if you visibly see it on your skin, those active ingredients that are protecting you, they do get rubbed off and need to be reapplied. So, uh, you know, if you were looking for a water resistant sunscreen, this, this, is, this does not claim to be water resistant. All right, let's talk about the sun protection. Uh, this is SPF 50, wonderful. Uh, in terms of SPF, you should be aiming for at least 30. So 50 is a great SPF. SPF tells you how well the sunscreen is, how good the sunscreen is uh, protecting you against a sunburn. Sunburns are caused by the types of ultraviolet radiation called UVB rays. And uh, SPF will tell you how the sunscreen protects you against those rays. But it doesn't tell you anything about how the sunscreen protects you against the other UV, UV rays, UVA rays, that penetrate really deeply into our skin and damage collagen and lead to wrinkle formation. 
the 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 uh, rating that will tell you that and it is not going to be on every sunscreen but this this has that rating is going to be the pa rating uh, which is four plus the highest pa rating that you can get um, and this is basically a measure of how well the um, product protected individuals from what's called persistent pigment darkening. It is a, it's, it's a type of a way to test the sunscreen for UVA. The details of it don't matter, um, but uh, four plus, suffice it to say, is good protection. There are two sunscreen ingredients in this. Diethyl amino hydroxy benzoyl hexyl benzoate, which goes by the brand name uh, Juvenal A+, protects against UVA broadly. It protects against UVA 1 and UVA 2. UVA, those are the rays that penetrate deeply and age the skin, damage collagen. Uh, there are actually two, two kind of spectrums of UVA, UVA 1 and UVA 2. And this will protect against both of those. Um, but uh, for your UVB, you, is the second ingredient, it's going to be ethyl hexyl triazone, which is juvenile T150. So there are only two uh, sunscreen ingredients in this. Those are the sunscreen ingredients. Uh, and then in terms of the other ingredients, butyl octyl salicate and hydrogenated polyisobutene are added as skin conditioning agents to make this moisturizing and kind of help in uh, dispersing the active ingredients and helping the product stay on your skin. That is, that is what those ingredients are intended for. And then in addition to those skin conditioning agents, this also has a uh, hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant uh, that will help hold on to water. So it's a really nice moisturizing vehicle. In other words, this is a wonderful moisturizing vehicle. It's a nice moisturizer in addition to a sunscreen. And then it has uh, some antioxidants. Antioxidants that are added to sunscreens are a little bit gimmicky because the way sunscreens are formulated, they're designed to form this film. And, to, to, and in doing so, they kind of keep things out. And so antioxidants really don't have much of a chance of functioning as antioxidants in sunscreens. And so when a sunscreen manufacturer is kind of pushing the antioxidant angle of their marketing, just, just kind of ignore that. They can be helpful though, in terms of stabilizing some of the um, active ingredients, the sunscreen filters. Um, and you know, for the most part, they're, they're not harmful. For example, one, one antioxidant this has is something called pentaerythritol tetradi-t-butyl hydroxy cinnamate. This is a massive molecule, probably just sits on the top layer of the skin and doesn't get in or do anything, I would imagine. Some people though are sensitive to cinnamates and cinnamate derivatives and cause some irritation. So that is an ingredient that might be, might be problematic for some of you in this. Uh, it also has centella asiatica and medecicide, uh, which are derived from go-to cola or the asiatic pennywort. This is a botanic ingredient that has been shown in very small, largely laboratory-based studies to be a promising ingredient for wound healing and improving uh, scar, scar, resultant scar formation, uh, the cosmesis of the scar. Promising, but not confirmed. And botanic ingredients always have the potential to cause problems for people with sensitive skin. Uh, so this too can always be a problematic potential, a potential culprit problematic ingredient for some of you out there. For me personally, I love using Centella in moisturizers. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast B5. Uh, it's a great product and I believe that, you know, I just, I really get along well with the Centella, but uh, it certainly does offer the potential for somebody to develop irritation to it because, because it is a plant-derived ingredient, you never really know what you're getting 100%. It's not as though it's one pure substance. Uh, but for me, I've always, I've always really enjoyed it. This also has niacinamide in it. Niacinamide is a fantastic ingredient, antioxidant, but also uh, helpful for redness and can help in decreasing oiliness and also brighten up the skin and improve hyperpigmentation. So those are the most significant uh, and relevant ingredients in this product. Uh, I would say my reservation as a whole with this product is that it only contains two UV filters, Juvenal A plus and Juvenal T150. And while that is broad spectrum, you're getting UVA1, UVA2, and UVB, I question why they didn't add another UV filter. 
either a UVB filter or I really would have loved to have seen them add um, Tinasorb to this, which would give you UVB and UVA1 and UVA2. I just, with, with so few filters in the sunscreen, I really question how the, the breadth of, of UV coverage that you would get, the breadth of UV protection. Having more filters makes for a, often will make for a more robust UV protection, just more, compre more, more comprehensive in terms of the spectrum. This is a chemical sunscreen, if I didn't already say that. The fact that it only has the two filters, however, makes it a chemical sunscreen that for people with sensitive skin, I think you might find that this uh, might not sting you like other chemical sunscreens do. Chemical sunscreens that have a high percentage of a lot of active filters, uh, you know, they can, they can be, they can sting. And a lot of that has to do with things that have to be added to the sunscreen to get those ingredients to, to be solubilized and stabilized can start to sting and burn. Uh, so you may find that you tolerate this chemical sunscreen really well, whereas other chemical sunscreens you don't. And I suspect it would have to do with the fact that there are only the two filters present. Overall, I think this is a fantastic moisturizer. I did not have any sensory experiences with using this, meaning I didn't have any burning, stinging, tingling, uh, discomfort. Uh, my eyes didn't water when I put it around my eyes. It's really easy to tolerate on the eyes. I'll put it on in a moment for you guys, but there is zero cast associated with this whatsoever, and it does not pill at all. There's no pilling associated with this. It does. It. I don't know if you can appreciate, but it is a little yellow in coloration when it comes out. And for me, it does not burn around the eyes. It's really hard to rub in cream on your face and talk at the same time. Da -da -da. Now you guys know I don't wear makeup. I don't wear foundation or anything like that but I have successfully applied over this with no issues, the Color Science Mineral Face Shield, which if you're not familiar with that product, it is a tinted mineral sunscreen that is water resistant. Water resistant. So that goes on over this with no issue. There's no balling or pilling or, or issue whatsoever. Um, so that's been fine for me and therefore I suspect that if you put makeup on over this, you won't encounter any issue. This isn't sticky either. That is a property of a lot of sunscreens that I have issue with and gets on my nerves because my hair you know, will stick in the sunscreen. I don't like that. And I always feel like if the sunscreen's sticky, then it's probably not staying on as well as it should. You know, if it has that kind of sticky feeling where you touch your face and you feel like it's coming off all over, I don't like that. This does not have that. They really did a good job with this. I just question why so few filters. It would have been wonderful to see them include Tinasorb in this to really have that confidence of a really nice extended spectrum of coverage for, for your UV. Um, but anyways, guys, comment below and if you've tried this, I will obviously use it up. I love it. So far, it is a K-Beauty sunscreen favorite. I don't have many K-Beauty sunscreens that I will recommend because the majority of them do have fragrance. It's $15 on YesStyle. Uh, it took about three weeks for mine to get here. Uh, so there is a little bit of a delay. Um, but you know, if you have a K-Beauty shop in your area, they may are, they may carry it in store. So look there. Um, but thank you guys so much for telling me about this. I really enjoy it. Uh, comment below and if you've used it, what your experience with it has been, how it, you know, worked for you. I'd love to hear more. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.